Hello and welcome to the second video in this Beginner's Java series. In this video we're going to be continuing exactly where we left off in the last one. We're going to be inside our main method here and we're going to be working with, uh, we're just going to be working inside this main method. We're going to be learning about variables and the basic syntax of Java. So let's go ahead and delete this system out print line that we have. Let's just make some space so we can see easier. So we're inside our main method, the entry point of our program. Now let's learn some of the basic syntax of Java. The first thing we can learn about, because it's pretty easy, is comments. And obviously, if you've ever seen code before, it doesn't matter if you haven't, when you're making code, you need to make comments in the code. So anyone reading it can basically understand the code you're writing and see what's going on uh, without having to sort of analyze the code and see and see what you've actually programmed. So a comment is basically something that the Java compiler ignores. It doesn't affect your programming in any way. It's literally just to help you read the code better. And we can do comments two ways in Java. We can do two forward slashes like so, and you can see it becomes grayed out like this. And then you can write comments here. Uh, and when you do the two forward slashes, uh, you can write uh, infinite amount of characters on this same line uh, for just containing whatever comments you want. And then as soon as you go to the next line, you're back to normal Java where it will uh, attempt to compile whatever's on this line here. But after these two forward slashes, everything you write here is not going to be compiled. It's just so you can read the code better. So that's the first way you can do a comment. The second way is if you want a multi-line comment. And it's basically kind of like uh, you can picture them like brackets. You have an opening comment and a closing comment. So the opening one is a forward slash and a star. And you can see when I do this, uh, these become grayed out as well, uh, as if they're part of the comment. That's because everything after this forward slash star will be a comment until it reaches a closing star and a forward slash. And NetBeans tabbed that kind of weirdly. Let me just delete that. There we go. So everything in between here uh, for any amount of lines is going to be a comment. And that's with the opening comment and the closing comment, which is forward slash and the asterisk and the asterisk and closing forward slash. And uh, in NetBeans, if you just do a forward slash and the asterisk and hit enter, it's going to automatically make that closing one at the bottom for you. So those are the two ways you can do comments. So now we can actually learn about basic variables. In every Java program you're ever going to make, you're going to be using variables. And variables are basically a word in Java, like we assign a variable to a specific uh, word that we can choose. And then whenever we type that word, it's going to be referring to that variable. And it can be, there's a syntax for the variables, but it can pretty much be anything excluding uh, some special characters. So I'm going to type the syntax for a variable in this little comment here, just so we can remember it. And it's basically, we first type the variable type. There's lots of different types of variables in Java. We need to state what variable type is first. Then we need to give it a name. And then we can, this bit's optional. Uh, we can either end it there with a semicolon, or we can add uh, the equal sign, and then assign it a value. And assigning the value is optional. We can just declare the variable and end the uh, end the line with a semicolon, and then uh, assign it a value somewhere else, or just use it, or may never use it. Although that would be useless, uh, but it's something you can do in Java. So after you've done the variable type uh, and the name, you can do equals and assign it a value, depending on what the variable type is. So let's go ahead and do the most simple variable type in Java, or at least in my opinion, and that's uh, an integer variable. An integer in mathematics is a whole number. It has no decimal places. It's just a whole number. So we can go ahead and write int, which stands for integer. You can see it's highlighted blue. This is an inbuilt keyword for Java. And it int is a variable type. It means when we write this word, uh, this keyword, it means the next thing we're going to type is going to be the name of an integer variable. We're declaring an integer. So the next thing we need is a name. So because of my lack of imagination, I'm simply going to call this my number. And now is a good time to tell you about naming conventions in Java. For when we make variables, and this applies to methods as well, although we'll look at those later. When we make variables, we use this thing called uh, camel casing. And camel casing is where you write a variable name. Uh, be, you, write, you start the variable with a lowercase. So 
if this is it for if it's more than one word. Um, so, all right, let, let me try to explain that better. So let's remove this. Basically, if I have a variable I want to call it number, we can just leave it as number. But if we want a variable to be called more than two words, because we can't have a space, we can't call it my space number uh, because this space isn't allowed uh, in the Java syntax. We basically start the variable name off with lowercase and then any preceding words we need the variable to have, we do an uppercase like this. So my number like so. Uh, there's nothing that stops you from doing it like this with a capital or just doing uh, all lowercase like so. Obviously all lowercase, doing the camel casing makes it easier to read. There's no real reason for not starting it with a uppercase letter, but this is the Java naming convention. And uh, it's basically if you look at other people's code on uh, whatever source, you'll see this naming convention here. So integer we're declaring the variable type integer then we do the space and now java's thinking the next thing i'm going to see is the name of the variable that is my number so whenever we write this my number we're referring to this variable here now you see it's grayed out it says variable uh, my number is not used and also we haven't actually assigned a value to it so we can do another space and do the equal sign and then we can give it a value obviously it has to be an integer value because that's the variable type we've declared so we can do any whole number uh, we can assign this to any whole number, like so, up to obviously uh, a max size limit, but pretty much the uh, memory the memory space uh, put aside for integer variables in Java is quite uh, significant. So in a normal program, you won't really go over the max limit for an integer. And if you do, there's a different variable type for if we need an even uh, bigger integer. So... Just to clarify the syntax once more, we declare the variable type, int, then we make a space, we give it a name, we've called it my number, with this thing called camel casing, where we make sure every consecutive word, uh, the start of it is capitalized. Then we put this uh, equal sign, which means assign the value on the right hand side to the variable on the left hand side, and this works in uh, lots of areas of Java. The variable can be already declared, for example, we can... Uh, reassign my number down here. We don't need to do put the int part again because we've already declared it. Uh, typing this variable type uh, is called declaring the variable. So once it's declared, we can use it wherever without having to redeclare it, without having to retype this bit. So we can come down here and assign it a completely new value. And then we could do this. Uh, uh, we can do this as many times as we want. We can just reassign we can use this my number over and over and over again. You see if you double click a uh, useful thing in NetBeans, it highlights all instances of that variable just so you can uh, read it more easily. So you can see here that we can reassign it a number of times. And we can what we can do now is, I'll actually keep this here because it will be a good way to demonstrate it. We're going to go ahead and do our system.out.println. If you remember from the last video, uh, this is the way we print stuff out to the console down here in Java. We do system.out.println and then we can simply write my number and that's going to print out the value stored in this variable here. So if we hit run, you can see it prints out a thousand. And if we go ahead and copy this and then paste it in between each line, it'll look kind of messy, but hopefully I'll make some gaps here. Okay, so we assign, uh, we make a variable called my number. We give it the value of a thousand. We're then going to print it out. We can then give it a new value, print it, print it out again, new value, print it out, etc. And when I hit run here, you can see that it's just going to print it out each time with the new value you give it. So this is just demonstrating that once you've declared a variable and assigned it a value, you can assign it and reassign it and reassign it over and over again uh, for whatever purpose you may need it for. So hopefully uh, you now understand the basic syntax of Java. Oh, and one thing I didn't mention is uh, the semicolon. Uh, it might be might seem obvious, but if not, I'll explain it. At the end of every operation you do in Java, uh, for example, if you're declaring a variable or if you're printing something out, you end it with a semicolon. And that's because when Java compiles, uh, it doesn't uh, it ignores white space. Like white space doesn't mean anything, and like these return breaks here don't mean anything to the Java compiler. So we need to make sure we end each line with the semicolon so that we so that Java knows uh, 
there is like we're going on to the next line we're doing the next thing uh to show that white space is irrelevant i can show you like we can delete these here and as long as there's a semicolon uh and java knows the next line it needs to do but obviously this is incredibly hard to read and would be very impractical to do so uh we use the returns and white space to help it to be more human readable and the semicolon is so that it's java readable so in the next tutorial we'll be looking at more uh, variable types and we'll be looking at mathematical operations